Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss about origin of IP. So far we discussed about what is IP and uh, how it impacts, uh, okay, how, how, how it impact on, uh, how it has got an impact on economic and cultural development of a society. And also we discussed about uh, the IP governance where uh, UN, uh, that WIPO and all we have discussed. So in this topic we will discuss about how from where exactly this origin of IP started. If you remember in the previous class I discussed about uh, the stone age and that and this you know. So IP was uh, maybe it is recently introduced uh, maybe in thousand years or something like that. But before that uh, the development was happening in the society, the progress was happening in the society, the civilization as the civilizations was uh, progressing. So I had uh, given an example of uh, the how you used to hunt the animals, okay, uh, and initially by the, the sharp stones and then uh, carved, uh, 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 what do you say, the uh, wooden pieces and then uh, started with the, uh, this, uh, you know, what do you say, the metal will this thing and all so that's how we started right so maybe the idea was introduced by some group or a person but that is a new idea right so that's how it was earlier it was there and then came into king's era and where usually the uh, what do you say the, for artists especially the artists like with the paintings and all they had on kind of uh, what do you say the reputation uh, based on their uh, unique painting or unique uh, structures or maybe sometimes uh, architecture when it comes to the uh, greek uh, era all these things even roman era and all and the inside like uh, what do you say the architecture of the building uh, or interiors of the building okay the royal touch or the luxury touch whatever they used to give all these things used to play a very important role and because they used to be uh, there used to be a particular group or a particular guy who was known for that particular architecture or particular painting so that's how the that was the concept of IP in the earlier days. Okay, so the same thing we are uh, discussing from there, from the beginning to the now. Okay, that we will discuss in the origin of IP. So though there is a no official record of origin of IP, it is believed that rudimentary or you can say the early form of IP was being practiced around 500 before common era or you can say that BCE 500 BCE in Siberia Siberia's a state of Greece so that was the what you say uh, almost 500 BCE we can chase okay now the natives of Siberia for what uh, they were famous the natives of Siberia's ancient Greek city in the southern Italy were granted a year's protection for using their intellect to create any new improvement in luxury so any new improvement in luxury if it is happening for one year it is the years for example the other architectures cannot copy that luxury or that particular improvement okay only it uh, belongs to the group or natives of Sabaris. next we are having the practical and realistic approach of IP government started taking shape in medieval Europe or you can say <coughs> the Middle Ages that is around 476 BCE to around uh, 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 100, oh, 14th century that is like uh, where exactly this uh, uh, the fall of Roman Empire around almost in 14th century takes place not till then and then in, uh, in uh, around 17th century that is in early uh, 17th century that is in 1623 uh, britain passed an intellectual property legislation okay that is ipl actually which entitled guides uh, uh, that means association of artisans and the merchants we are having both artisans and the merchants for the trade matters and all to create innovations and bring them to the market for the trade purposes so that you you do the a particular art and uh, that should be unique and you bring it to the market and that IPR will preserve will is given to you and uh, uh, anything uh, anyone uh, if anyone is copying that then they will be fined heavily and that amount will be paid to you like that kind of structure it was <coughs> 
However, this legislation brought a lot of uh, resentment, or uh, usually a ir lot of irritations among the, among the public because it was like uh, I had done this uh, first, and then he has done all that kind of redundancy. It was there, or you can say the irritation. It was there. Thus, uh, it was replaced by the statue of monopolies, which gave the rights to the original creator and inventor for 14 years. So, and then later they realized that it should be given to the only uh, those person who are initially it is making because sometimes the inventor might not have raw materials the other people uh, who are not the actual inventors will have the raw material they will uh, bring the product to the market very easily or very early compared to the inventor to in order to uh, uh, give uh, proper rights to the uh, the person who created it statue of monopolies that they have introduced okay that is to uh, give the rights to the inventor for almost 14 years so another legislation again the city of Anna uh, that was uh, passed by the British Parliament in 1710 that is in the early 18th century. So this legislation aimed at straightening the copyrights by providing rights to the new authors for recreation and distribution of their work. So here one small uh, changes was there for the especially for the authors of the book and the publications and all. Uh, there is they gave us uh, something called uh, uh, copyrights uh, where they can recreate their uh, published work and they can redistribute their work. The work uh, could also be renewed uh, for another 14 years. Again, if you want to increase it, again after 14 years, again for 14 more years you can take. Okay, can't really wait. So by the end of the 18th century, that is around 19, 1790s and all, the beginning of the 19th century, the almost every country started laying down IP legislations or regulations to protect their novel inventions and the creation. So that they wanted to preserve their own, uh, uh, what do you say, the inventions in their own country, so that the other countries should not uh, take a bit for granted. So that's it about the origin of IP. The next topic we are having the history of IP in India, which is where start with the patents and then uh, copyrights and related rights. Okay, under that trademark, geographical indications are there, and we are having the many other copy form, uh, right forms are there that we will discuss trade secrets, all those things, and then we'll move on to the seventh topic. Okay, next topic we'll discuss about history of IP in India.